Hello and welcome to another episode of the 91 Podcast, the show where we dig deep into people's passions with the hope to educate, inspire and encourage you. On today's episode, we have Mr. Michael Adekoloye. He's a business and political analyst, the host of the TMA show, and he's also the CEO of Lancaster Investment. Welcome, Michael. I'm so glad to have you in the studio today. I am actually, um, I'm, I'm happy to be here and, um, you know, hopefully we can have some meaningful conversation. Michael, there's a lot I keep seeing online about prices increasing in Nigeria and people struggling to make ends meet. Um, what exactly is going on in layman terms? I think basically the foreign exchange policy, which is obviously um, letting the market demand, determine the true value of, of the Naira and also um, in terms of the removal of, of for, for a subsidy. These are two, two major, major um, um, government changes that are quite, to be honest, quite big and, you know, ground hitting and and the impact will be felt um, across both goods and services and um, inflation across the economy. It would affect a lot of things. And um, um, I think that there's a good and and, 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 and bad side to, to the impact of this um, um, two policies. So um, in terms of the uh, forest for subsidy removal, that's, you know, increase in revenue um, 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 for the for the government. Um, obviously, the, the, the Naira will be based on the band and supply in terms of um, the true value of, of, the, of, the, of the Naira. So, um, for in terms of how it's affecting day-to-day people, mm. the cost of the pump has actually gone up. You know, that's, that's it. So, um, Nigeria is a country that heavily de- um, depends on a lot of importation of goods, you know, and... Um, so the cost of that would go up. We, you know, we have we have our, our luxury items. We have our day to day items that people use in terms of, um, you know, from food or even because we we're not really a, a, a we are not a manufacturing. I mean, we, we we are more of a consumer economy whereby we we import things and um, you know even the cost of airline travels as well would go up. You know, mm. traveling out and there will be a massive impact definitely across across the board and. The people would feel um, the people are feeling the, the 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 heat right now. So it's 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 tough times ahead. Well, so what does a person do in such a time? What can you do to make ends meet? What can you do to try and make you know your life better financially? I I don't think it's more the onus is on 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 the person alone. I think the onus is on the government. Hmm. So um, one person wise, yes, you can be. You know, penny pinching, as they call it. You know, focusing on what is necessary. What do we need to survive, and what are the things? But you know, how can you penny pinch when you're on thirty k? You know, it's, it's it's virtually impossible. We're talking about the people that are highly impacted. I think there will be at least one hundred and thirty million Nigerians will be impacted by this one way or another. Uh, you know, the top earners. I don't think maybe they're the top earners. I really, you know, so close middle class if they still exist. We'd be about maybe like maybe I don't know maybe five percent of the population. So large the majority would be suffering um, based on this. So um, my my take on this is that the government definitely needs to um, put in some kind of policies. You know the eight thousand um, naira a month, which is the palliative that the government is trying to put down and say okay that would help monthly. I, I think that is one, but there's other things that the government can do, you know, to, to provide a welfare state. Whereby, like what? Um, I, I think things like, um, for example, giving out um, vouchers, you know, maybe food vouchers or maybe petroleum vouchers, petrol vouchers, whatever the case may be, you know, for to, to ease the, the pressure on people. Mm-hmm. So these vouchers might be somewhere that could be rolled out, you know, you know, and, you know, and it can be, you know, at the pump. Maybe it's not a subsidy; it's a voucher for key service people. You know, maybe nurses, maybe doctors, or, or people that are key workers in the in the organisation. That they have this kind of vouchers that can actually help them to make things easier. There, there's other things that they can do. You know, we don't. We're in the the 21st century, whereby you know people can work from anywhere. We don't need big offices anymore. People can actually work from home yeah. and. Um, I think the idea is, you know, um, you know, giving that flexibility. So, and you know, making sure they can speak to you know private sectors. Well, they can't obviously enforce it, but let people work from home due mm. to the, the the cost of um, of living, of cost of traveling, which is uh, takes a big chunks of most people's mm. salary. So, 
as I said, government needs for some sort of welfare um, in to help the day to day people. But Michael, in this, even in this economy, I'm sure there's certain types of maybe businesses that are thriving. Not everybody is suffering, right? Yeah, um, I, I think the the impacts would be across board. Yeah, but there there would be some some businesses that would be you know um, in some essence. Um, driving or making a bit of a profit. What sort yeah. of businesses would that be? Um, I think, be? In, in my opinion, it would be, you know, the banking sectors are always doing well because mm. of their high interest rates and the charges they do. Those are the key sectors in Nigeria that they thrive regardless mm. of what's going on, you know. So they would definitely be having a, 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 a field there. I don't think the impact would be that heavy on them, mm. um, you know. And um, so they, they, they provide a certain service, you know. Um, I think there will be impact to be felt across maybe some of the telecoms might be doing well. I'm not 100% sure. But there will be some businesses. I'm talking about these are the big, big um, 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 businesses that are there. But mostly, I would say, you know, that most the crux of a society, the crux of a nation is the small, medium enterprises. Mm. So those are the people that have to adjust. I'm mm. talking about the person that, that has a barber shop, mm. for example, or the person that has a small restaurant. Those are the people that are hard hit mm. right now. And they are the people that say they must be, they will be in that midst of 130 mm. million people that, you know, that maybe into one business or another that will be currently mm. struggling right now with what's going on in Nigeria. You mentioned the word adjust, that they have to adjust. Yeah. So what advice would you give to, you know, people like that? How can they adjust? How can they adapt in this current economical crisis? The, the businesses or the individuals? So the individuals who have maybe small businesses like a barbershop yeah. or your baking cakes or your... Hairdresser. hairdresser what advice do you have for them what can they do to adapt or to adjust yeah in this, this current they, they, crisis? as i said i, I said it, it's not the approach is not just from one angle it has to be a government-led approach mm. to kind of make sure these businesses are supported so they can carry on running mm. and you could see during the covid pandemic in the uk there was grant given out to small businesses to make sure they can keep running the government needs to put those kind of incentives on the ground or else most businesses, the core that actually support the nation would die. So mm -hmm. that is where they can just, I think most businesses have adjusted as far as they can. Mm -hmm. You know, they, we don't have 24 um, hours electricity in Nigeria as it stands. These are big, big issues. So most businesses run on small generators. Mm -hmm. The cost of oil will be a massive impact. How do you want the bubble guy to adjust? You know, you have to increase his prices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, increasing the prices, can people afford it? You know, people might start saying, okay, I'll cut my hair at home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for that business to survive, for those small, small, medium business, you know, the SME business, what you call the the the, the pillars of the, the country, for they to be able to survive under this very harsh climate, the government needs to come in for them. You know, government needs to support SMEs by providing grants, by providing, you know, loans that they can service, not business loans with high interest rates, very, very low interest rate loans that can actually help their business weather the storms and, you know, help them to keep performing. We know that, that I think that would, so by the time the 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 the, the, the positive impact of the policy changes starts happening, those businesses will be a lot stronger in terms of um, their financial um, status. Okay, let's take the government out of it because we know yeah. it's, the government isn't always very effective or efficient. So without the government being involved, you know, government's one side. Yeah. What can an individual, maybe like me, do in this time and season to be able to, you know, improve my financial status? Yeah, so, um, you know, we all, you know, everyone knows what they earn in terms of income expenditure. The idea would be to just, you know, cut down in terms of expenses. Um, if you have that, you know, extra income where I lose change and you can start creating a side hustle or something that can make you money in the situation, then that's the idea. You start looking at those kind of things. Um, obviously, some of them will not be able to um, give you instant income. Mm -hmm. Some might be able to give you some instant income. Mm -hmm. a, very, a very good example is I, I, I would say I was speaking to a colleague, a former colleague, and he was a very good guy, Matt's back in the days, and, and, and he's taken on you know, teaching children as a side also. Mm -hmm. And he put his online classes and he teaches children maths. And these are children that are currently struggle due to the state of the economy, the state of the education system. And he's providing, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of platform for them to, to learn maths and not just learn maths. At the same time, he does coding lessons, mm -hmm. you know, like, 
you know, because and, and some parents can't afford it, they pay for it and those kind of things. So that is a side of hustle apart from his mm-hmm. salary, and that helps him on the weekend, and he does that on the weekend, and that's extra income for, for the medium family. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the, in terms of skilling, um, it, this might be more of a long-term kind of thing. You know, if you are, you know, if you're good with your hands and you can learn a trade, learn the trade, understand the trade, the ethics of it, and try and put yourself out there. Because there's always good to be, you know, like you're in charge, you're in control. A lot of people in Nigeria now, you know, you see, uh, I think I was in Lagos, I, I think it was December last year, and um, most of the guys that, most of the cabs I got into, um, um, they are very highly educated people that have a nine to five jobs. Mm. And they do boat and they do Uber as well. So these are all side hustles people are getting into apart from their nine to five. Mm. to make sure they can make ends meet. Sorry. So apart from the taxi business yeah. or teaching online, yeah. what are the most profitable side hustles to get into at the moment? So profitability is, uh, it's, uh, you know, we all depend on what you go into. So as I said, I'll, I'll break it down to long term, short term. So mm. um, so many examples, people are going to farming, you know, people are going to fish farming. You know, they're open, they're setting up their own fish ponds, small fish ponds. Um, some are going into poultry, having hens, you know, and, you know, it takes time for the hen to actually grow up, for it to lay eggs, and you can now start selling the eggs. So I'll say due to the large population of Nigeria, um, having an agricultural side also is um, the most benefit thing because, you know, it, it, but it's, it's not something that you're going to um, get into on a day one. You probably need to, learn the trades, go and work with people that have started it up, you know, and um, understand how it works, you know, understand the bad times, the good times, understand what is needed to be someone that can do this, you know, minimal farming and produce, you know, is it the the, the hens or is it, you know, goat rare, or is it, is it piggery, whatever those kind of things. They're, 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 some of them are a bit capital in terms of some are not, but understand those kind of the end to end, how to deliver in those kind of areas. And um, I can assure you, on the agriculture fund, you would make a lot of money. And this is the reason why is Nigeria consumed daily. And um, and the reason why they consume daily and the reason why there's a lot of wastage in the economy and things like that is because of, you know, the electricity, flat powers, the big things. Mm-hmm. Manufacturing is neither there or here, neither here or there. And um, those are the kind of problems that you see people would face on a day-to-day basis, how do they store this produce that they're going? So 40% of that might go into waste. But mm. apart from that, because it's a daily consume, people, you know, you go on the roadside, people are selling noodles and mix with eggs and things. So you, by the time your hen has maybe like four or five crates, it will all be sold out. People mm. are ordering for the next thing. So in terms of the, the agricultural business, I think that is an area that I think anyone going to go and learn about fishery, go and learn about, you know, um, um, you know, Creating your own fish ponds, you know, um, you know, selling catfish, selling all kinds of fish that people, tilapia fish that people eat daily, learn on it. A lot of these things can be learned on YouTube. You might not even need to go out and be an apprentice somewhere else, you know, just go in there and um, learn it, find out how to do it from A to B. And, and those are things, as like I said, they're, they're, they're more of the long run thing. The short run, you need to cut, cut your cost, you know. Things that you can do easily with things that if you have that kind of skill, you can go online and set something up yourself, provide training for children, that's fine. You know, those are the kind of things that you can do in terms of the short terms and getting that. But in the long run, things, farming is a key area whereby you're in control of what you're doing. You, you, you know, the idea is to make sure you, you learn, you understand what's in you, how do my fish grow, um, what, what's the cost, well, you know, understand your cost of your, of, of, of our scholarly production um, to, to now try and get some kind of, you know, a, you know, profits, margins on everything that you're, you're trying to sell. So how do you pick your side hustle? Um, the, the best way to pick your side hustle is based on your capability. You you know yourself. You know what kind of person you are. You know what you can do. So there's there's so much stuff. You People feed into You learn from your surroundings mm-hmm. so you understand. But the first thing is your basis, what you qualified in, what you can you do. You know, um, I remember when I opened up um, a restaurant, people were asking me, oh, are you crazy? Why did you open up a restaurant? Mm-hmm. But... Um, Apart from that, I like eating out, so I love eating in nice places and other things, and um, and you know I love cooking as well. So, and but I'm a tech guy. <laughs> People are like a tech guy, business guy. Why is he going into this? And I think one reason why I went into it was because I found out there's there's a need for providing cheaper food in the UK that's not as expensive and just you know providing that kind of food. 
and at the same time providing, you know, something that I could just pick and go, have a little box and just pick and go and deliver. And that was my idea in my head when I when I when I opened that business. And and um, I obviously due to the fact you know when you when you when you start a business, the business grows arms and legs because people come and start demanding for things you don't have. And sometimes it might be best for you to say, you know what, no, I don't do that. But you feel okay, the business is not doing too bad. Let me get someone in that does that. So this is where you might start having some issue because your vision changes slightly because the people you bring into your business can either have a negative impact. Or positive impact. Mm. Most times, the people you bring in would have a a a positive impact, but sometimes it might be a negative impact, which can kind of sway the business <laughs> in some direction that you know you don't mm. want it to go. So, so that's what I'm saying. So, based on the fact that I love cooking, mm. so I thought, okay, you know what? Let me put this into practice and try and do it on a commercial level and try and make some money. So, your passion as well would drive you to find out what you like doing. There's mm. some things that you can do for free. You know, and, and if you can do some ladies can, they're good at making hair, plaiting yeah. hair. So if you're good at doing this and you do this for free, mm. why not turn into a side hustle? Mm. I tell most people coming to UK that are flying in from Nigeria, the Jack Bar um, generation, <laughs> that learn a side hustle. Mm. Yeah, I understand that you all want to work in an office. Yeah, and earn, you know, maybe you, I don't know how much you want to earn a day or, or, or annually, but learn a side hustle. Understand that. Um, it's important to have something you can do with your hand. So this country is not a place whereby people look down on you. If you're a carpenter, if you're a plumber, if you're a tailor, if you're a hairdresser, trust me, you make your money. Mm -hmm. So learn this side also. Don't come here and say, you know what, oh, I want to be a BA. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Have that idea. I want to be a business analyst. I want to be a scrum master. I want to be a mm -hmm. product manager. I want to be a data analyst. They're all great things and mm -hmm. you can do them. But trust me, you can earn as much being a hairdresser. Doing other things. <laughs> that <laughs> is something I noticed you, with Nigerians, yeah. though. You can earn as much being a hairdresser. Right. You can earn as much opening your own barber mm. salon. You can earn as much being a plumber. Mm. You, you know, an average outfit you're wearing now, I think in the UK, maybe the hundred pounds, so just what I'm wearing right now. You can earn that money. Mm. So, you know, but I think, you know, there's, it's due to where we're from, we believe in white collar jobs. We believe that's the only way of showing that you're successful. But yeah. I think that could be taken. And that reason is because labor is cheap where we're coming from. Mm. So those skills are not valued. So in yes. our head, we believe those skills are not valued. Mm. But back in the UK, coming over here, you'd be so surprised. You know, you you call a call out charge for a plumber to come and visit your house right now mm. would be maybe like 80 pounds. Call out charge. <laughs> no, mm. he hasn't done anything. Mm. So by the time he finishes, he's earning 300 pounds off you. Mm. So you know what I'm saying? So being a plumber is not something you look down yeah, on. So yeah. learn the skills before coming. Get the certification. It can help you try your um, your stay or, or, or studying period in the, in the UK. Mm. And I was just saying that that's something I noticed with a lot yeah. of Nigerians. They look down on certain yeah. jobs like that. Yeah. But a lot of those jobs are getting people through each day here. Yeah. Like even the jobs like care home jobs, you know, yeah. washing people, cleaning yeah. people. Yeah. Those jobs actually pay a lot of money here. Yeah. But a lot of Nigerians might look down on that and say, oh, I don't want to get involved in that. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, be cleaning someone's bum or something. Well, yeah. those jobs do pay a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they do. They do. But, you know, in, is in terms of, I, I did say something about passion. Mm. So, and um, I, think, I don't think anyone would be passionate about cleaning people's body. And, <laughs> so I doubt oh, you, that. you don't know people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I doubt that, but I think <laughs> in my 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 opinion is your passion, what you're passionate about, mm. what you can do for free, or the market you want to go to. Try and understand it. Mm. How are people doing? Find people that are in this market. Have conversation with them. Sit down. Learn from them. And you know, and if it's something, as I said, YouTube is free. <laughs> it's free. Mm. Google is free. Just go on it. Do your market research. Understand what you're going into. You know, I, I, I remember I was, I was um, online, I was looking at stuff on, you know, on, on these social media channels. And I realized that people even order stuff from China to sell on on, on, mm. on, on eBay. Or, yeah. So, you know, that, that is a side also. I know a guy that his, his key thing was phones and he mm. ordered phones from China, order stuff, and he would sell on eBay. Mm. Whatever you can do, don't just limit yourself. So that I want to wear a tie, get dressed and, and go to an office because mm. there's other things you can do that can give you, I wouldn't even call it side money, 
the side income can become the main income. Mm. I do know some people whose side incomes actually are much more than the incomes they get from work. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what they're surviving on. Yeah. You know, not the work no, money, not the but work the money money. from yeah. their side yeah. hustles. Yeah. The, the cost of living is in the UK or in Nigeria, you know, would affect, you know, it's affecting everyone, even the guys that are, uh, so even families that have been earning a lot of money that, you know, they, they would have to, you know, tighten their belt right now because, you know, there's the current um, interest rates um, rise by the, the central bank, and um, there's an impact. There, there, there's an impact on anyone. So the better you know what you're doing and understand where you need to cut cost. If you don't need certain things, if your kids come in private school, take them out to cut the cost. Mm. You know, add extra lessons for them just to help them rather than, you know, putting yourself under extreme pressure that mm. you can't afford. And now focus on to see where you can add value to the family. Do you use single mother or single father or, you know, joint partners, whatever the case may be, or just a single person. Mm. You know, there, there's where you can add value to yourself rather than just um, um, I'm doing your regular nine to five. The, the idea is that in Nigeria now there's brand influencers, right? Yeah. There are a lot of people that do brand influencers. These are just people that they weren't trained for this. They just... They start creating content, creating content, creating content. Brand approach them because of the number of views they have. Because, and then, you know, they start getting paid. A good example are people like Brother Shaggy, people like um, Nedu. Mm. And if they've done very well, carved their niche, if you look at it very well, find out what their background, what you show that maybe some of them were studying medicine or some of them were planning to be a lawyer or, or even lawyers, mm. you understand? But they just diversify into a certain different area. Mm. And this has actually helped them and built them up. And that side also, or, or an area which they were going into, has become the main source of income. Mm. Mm. So do you mind giving maybe like five steps on how to survive this economic crisis? Okay. Um, five steps would be, um, I think number one, you start from your books. What's the income? What's the expenditure? Mm -hmm. And cut cost. <laughs> You know, everybody does that. Cut cost. Oh, you keep saying cut cost. You cut, need to cut cost. It's hard. It's, it's harder than yeah. If you shop at you know Marks and Spencer, maybe go to Aldi. Mm. <laughs> Do you understand? If you eat out three times a day <laughs> in a week, maybe mm. eat out once. Mm. So these are the things that you need to cut cost on. You know, because that's the first step. Um, I think the second step is how do I create this that side also? How do I move? To how do I what what can I do what what am I passionate about? Start looking into that you know understanding what you're passionate about. Um, as I said, the the internet right now it's it's full of a lot of content that can actually um, provide that knowledge you're looking for. And um, a third thing, become an apprenticeship. Mm. Go and learn from someone that's done it. <laughs> you know, go and learn from someone that's done it. And once you've learned from someone, then the fourth thing which I'll say after you've learned from someone that's done it. Do a trial. Don't just go crazy. Do a trial. Maybe a little, you know, a little um, flyer, a little things. Or don't even go that far. Find one or two people that might be interested. Guys, I'm doing this. So word of mouth can help you before you start going into a flyer level. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're testing the water. See how the market is. Then you start tailoring what you're going to offer. Um, the fifth thing, once you know what you're offering, then now go into a flyer. Then... Break it down and start advertising on on do YouTube videos, do um, Facebook videos, do um, Instagram, whatever the social media channel you want. Do your videos. Start putting yourself out there. Start sharing it around, and you know when you share it, you, you can share it to your church group, your um, your your mosque group, or whatever you are, you whatever you, where you belong to. And slowly but surely, people will start calling, people start knowing it. It takes a bit of a time to, to gain momentum, whatever you want to do. But trust me, with time, with consistency, a lot of things happen. I was telling you a story before I got it. Some things start from a camera mm. before it becomes a studio. <laughs> mm. Just a camera. So apart from a side hustle, are there particular jobs that people could get into right now that are very, you know, um, profitable? particular jobs that make good money at this particular moment? Um, so the, the the tech space would forever make money. Mm. So that that's uh, um, an area that people need to upskill on, areas like, you know, DevOps, mm. um, cybersecurity, um, 
those are key areas that people that would people would forever need is, you know, that that they can, in my opinion, go on six week courses just to get those skills and now start practicing. They're lucky, get a junior roles in those areas, mm. and maybe six weeks, maybe three months. I'm not hundred percent sure. Get a junior course in those areas and. Um, and hopefully, if they get a job that can actually move them up, and you know, they you know the average salary might be between I don't know forty to sixty thousand, and they can't even go up depending on experience level of experience. Mm. So the tech space is one. Also, being a developer as well, and coding as well, those are key areas that you can actually go into. And um, it will take a while to become you know next maybe a year or two years to get to a level where you're very comfortable. Mm. But in the long run, you would you would go. So, you know, I I, I some some people would be, you know. Job wise would be, you know, some, some might not need to retrain, some might just need to apply within the organization and just say, okay, you know what, I'd like to try this out based on the fact they're already within the organization. Check, find out what's going, what jobs are going. The fact they're already there, they might give you that chance to go in there with some training to back you up to move on. So don't just sit there and say, okay, oh, it's very bad, put your head under the sand and say, oh, things are really bad, you know, but just do something about it. Mm-hmm. Just get up and do something. That's my opinion. So um, just with the way things are looking economically, yeah. Um, for the next five years, do you see things as getting better or things getting worse? There's um, in terms of Nigeria, there's a massive brain drain going on right now. So there is a lot of doctors, nurses, engineers leaving the shore. So there's a massive gap to be filled, mm. and uh, so I I would say there has to be a and we're churning out about one million students every year, one million. So, wow. so, so about one million every year. So, so those students need to fill those gaps. So, um, there has to be a, a two approach, two way approach, a process whereby the government supports. I, I spoke about small medium enterprises, and government supporting them by providing them the right front to take on apprenticeships. You know, in the UK they do things whereby. I think um, last time I checked, I think it was 18 and 20,000 apprentices. You, you're allowed to take on two, two, three, or four. And the government paid that salary. Wow. So those are how, and those apprenticeships in the years, years or two, three, four years, they'll fill those positions that's been, that's been led. So the government needs to have those kind of um, initiatives to, to help small business to take on these people. I don't know how it's going to be run. And another thing that can be done is, you know, people can just not leave uni and not have jobs. Mm. <laughs> so there has to be a process whereby those people are provided with, uh, with, with, you know, avenue to employment. Small medium enterprises waiting for them once they come. Obviously, not all of them will get employed, but a large majority of them should fill those shoes of one that's left. Another thing I, I, I think to avoid the calamity, uh, you know, that might happen in the next four or five years, is if there's any kind of, um, um, I don't know, um, um, scheme that the government, Nigerian government, come up with by trying to encourage the ones that have been here years to come back home and head, head, you know, different areas and provide those kind of, you know, guidance and services based on their experience. You know, there's so many, trust me, there's, I have met so many intelligent Nigerians in this country and I'm thinking in my head, if only this guy was back home, you know, just speaking to them and thinking, wow, and what they're doing, how they're contributing, hmm. you know, th- those kind of people can be brought back to Nigeria to actually Well, help. you're an intelligent Nigeria. What yeah. would encourage you to go back home? Oh, that's, that's <laughs> very, very interesting. I did expect that question. That's, wow. <laughs> oh, um, what would encourage you? Uh, what would make wow. you go back to Nigeria? Uh, I'm, I'm in and out of Nigeria, I'll put it that way. Um, go back fully would be quite hard because um, of family, ETC. But I'm in and out of Nigeria, you mm. know, so um, um, to go back and stay, it's, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of things that has to be in place, you like know. Um, um, uh, the Nigeria I dream of would be a Nigeria that's an enabling environment for, mm. you know, small businesses and, you know, big businesses to actually thrive. A Nigeria whereby, you know, the, the cost of doing business is, 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 not, is not that high. There's the ease of doing business. There's no red tapes, overtaxing, um, overtaxation, and it's it's more of a case whereby, you know, things are actually functioning, working. Where do I, you know, it's the same like most people that go to America. People mm-hmm. go to America because it's the land of dreams. If you go in there, you're providing a good or a service, there's a high possibility that you would make it. I know a guy that went there that was selling books online, 
mm. you know, classic books, and he made it. So wow. I, I want Nigeria to be that kind of country, you know, that country whereby, you know, it's an enabling environment whereby businesses come in, foreign businesses coming into Nigeria can come in easily. Obviously, there will be some red tapes, but, you know, ease of doing business coming in, you know, um, taking away all this heavy taxation, making sure the process actually works, in my opinion, that and that they can actually, you know, run a business whereby they are making the profits. That, 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 that's the kind of Nigeria I dream of. And that, and that kind of Nigeria, when Nigeria gets to that level, oh, definitely we, we are going to head back to Nigeria. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some point I would be there a lot more than I am right now. You've run a business in Nigeria before, haven't you? Yes, I have. Oh, um, and and how I, st- was that? I still run in my business. And what <laughs> challenges or challenges do you um, face? Um, uh, the, 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 it's the same day to day challenges most businesses face in Nigeria, which is um, not having being able to find the right people mm. um, to do the job because they don't have the experience. And um, the cost itself, you know, paying, buying diesel generations and you know, all that kind of things. The cost of flying from one state to another to go and meet a client. Sometimes some people just and it, it's it's a cultural thing as well. So they people need to change and know that they they they, you know, me flying and me providing my good service. You're not you're not just doing me a service. Mm. You're doing your business service. If we can actually work together and coexist and my, value my time and I value your time. Those yeah. are probably face. Um, people generally don't value your time mm-hmm. and because. And not valuing your time is a big problem for, for most Nigerians. Mm. And the reason all those cultural bad habits need to mm. change, you know. And um, I, 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 I see a lot of the, I call them the Gen Zs, they're doing things a lot more differently, you know. They're mm. doing their own stuff online. And maybe because they can see our services are provided abroad, they're improving their services, they, they work differently, you know. And I, th- I think it, that would get better with time. And the mm. people that, they, you know, you have to call and wait for 12 hours, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't mean you're busy. That means you're not very efficient. Mm. You need to be able to manage your time. And if you can't do it, no matter who you are, director or not, you need to be able to delegate mm. to people that can handle it. To understand that the the time is key for the person that's coming to offer a service to you. I'm, I'm bringing you a new IT system and saying this can do ABC for you. And I have to wait 12 hours for you to see me. That's not, you don't value You sound like time. you've had, you've I've had, had those kind of, I've had those kind of experience. <laughs> You know, I've I've come back three or four times. That, that's not sales. You either have a yes or no or get the right people in the board. Efficiency, we need to be more efficient in how we do business mm. because or most business will run away, you know. So there, there, there's there's some key areas where you can focus on there. Like, okay, um, we have, I think, about 900 government prior status or maybe 1,000. And those prior status are, are focusing on different areas from aviation to telecom to this to that. And those products have to raise projects all the time. So if they're putting projects out there for people to actually help them, these projects will be run by small, medium enterprises. Mm. Or, you know, and if they are meant to be run by small, medium enterprises, there has to be efficiency. Mm. I put in a bid to run this. I have to be vetted. And if I pass all the criteria, I have to be given the business. And I have to be paid on time. If I am not paid on time, there's no way I can deliver. Mm. So, you know, because I have staff, so I have people. So all that's what I said, the culture of bad habits need to change mm. on how we do businesses. So so people always look so high up and look at one man at the top and say, Nigeria's not working. Mm. Nigerians themselves mm-hmm. need to change yeah. to know that, okay, this file is on my table. I've read it and I understand that, okay, this meets my criteria. If it doesn't meet my criteria, happily decline it. If it meets my criteria, a project should not be running for two, three years on 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 discovery without mm. it moving to a place of when it's being implemented. A an organization cannot. I heard a story saying that we had a paper mill that was that was launched ago and never ever did anything. We have um, Ajakuta Steel Complex till so now that hasn't done anything. Private sectors are there to come in and do this business. This would lead to employment as well for young people that's coming out because if the private sector take on, they will need more people. I spoke about apprenticeship schemes. Get them on the apprenticeship scheme. Get young people, a lot of young people capable into these businesses. And obviously they would be performing, you know, to deliver. And the idea of jackpot would now become a thing of the past, Mm. whereby people are running away because they have nothing to do. Mm. You know, it's easy to say go to the farm. There has to be some sort of scheme that would take them to the farm. Mm. What is this scheme called? How does this scheme enable them? How much has been paid to put each person out there, what area should they focus in? You know, they talk of things about low-hanging fruits. 
what are our quick fruits that we can, you know, when I say quick fruit, not I don't know, fruit, what kind of quick, you know, agricultural product that we can get out there and we can start growing. These are things that the government policies and, and, and process needs to be done so that we can actually get things out there. So it's, when I talk about the government and I talk about people, it you can't be, you can't be, um, um, you can't isolate one from the other. Mm. They work together. A neighboring environment, government creates that. The process for me to be able to live, do my day-to-day -day business, the government creates that. Mm. If I don't have electricity, I can't do my day-to-day -day business. You understand? If I don't have security, I can't do my day-to-day -day business. So these are key to the government. But if I don't have good roots, I can't move my yam that I planted in, in um, you know, uh, uh, some parts of Nigeria and move it to the place where my market is. I need those things. So it is not rocket science. It's done everywhere else in the world. Mm. But the government has a major role to play to make sure everyday business person is doing it as much ease as possible. And the government has to make sure projects that they're putting out there to make everyday per person easy, that those projects are streamlined and deliverable. You know, that th there's no red tapes around it. Anyone that's seen collecting bribe is affecting that pipeline to deliver. Mm. Get rid of that person. Once it's reported, maybe it's a whistleblower, for anyone that's holding up projects, get rid of them so that there should be a streamline where things are delivered, not... It shouldn't be about, I know you, you know me. It should be about based on um, capability, based on um, um, history or what you've done before in the past and what you're doing now. So that's how you get an economy running. That's how you get business thriving. That's how, you know, you go from, you know, from recession to be a performing economy. You know, so, and I think that in my opinion, that's, those are the key things that we need to look at and start helping uh, that would help people from, you know, leaving the country and just want to stay there. And as you said, people from here seeing that would come back into Nigeria. Definitely. If, if it's working, if they know, if they bring in £100,000, their money's safe, they can kick off a business and they can start, you know, wherever they tend to do with that money. You know, they, they know. And, you know, that that that's... If those are things are not there, they're not in place, then, then we, we'll struggle. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, your government has done something good lately. Yeah. You know, the student loans they introduced. <laughs> True. So that I, I, that is, you know, that see, the problem is it's the ideas are usually great. The implementation it's is another the problem. thing. Yeah. So implementation and running a project and actually the delivery is the key. There's so many projects on idea. They look so good on paper. Mm -hmm. They need consultancies to come in and deliver this. There's no point having great ideas on paper and not being able to deliver it. Mm. They need strong bodies. So they're businesses in Nigeria that, that can implement these things, that can come in and actually deliver these things. You can't, in any essence, you can't just, you know, say, okay, I'll, I'll give each student student loan. How do you, how does it work? How does it get tracked? How does the loan get distributed? In the UK, for you to get a loan, you need an NI. Okay, Nigeria has similar things, an NI number. How do you get your money back? How much is a student loan? Um, how is it mean tested? Is it based on how much the parents of the people and how would they be? When would you be collecting the money back? Hmm. Is it when the what's the threshold when he starts earning over I don't know maybe three million a year? Then you start charging the money because you have to let that person, that child, or you know the student that graduated, um, um, at least be able to rent an accommodation. Yeah, you know. So these are schemes and policies that need to be proven. Someone needs to, you know, chart this out and you know break up. You know, I've been an analyst. Create a flowchart. How does it work end to end? Mm. How does this work? Where's the yes? Where's the no? How do we go? Where's the, you know, a dead end? No, we can't go there. So they're great ideas. Ideas, but the vehicle to deliver it mm. is great. And also a vehicle to deliver, I spoke about culture, bad habit culture. I call them bad habit culture. People that have bad habits need to be retrained, knowing that if you're stopping this student loan, for example, to, to get to Mr. ABC in um, Uni Unical, you are affecting the business. You are part of the problem of Nigeria. So that coaching should be instilled that, you know what, you need to let this work than stopping things from working. Because we have a lot of people in the Nigerian system that stop things from working. Mm. And this will shock you. And they are paid to make it work. But their job in their head, because they want extra money, is to stop, stop things from working. Until they get the money. Until they, they get the money they want. So these are the issues that mm. has to be looked at. And if we do not stop things from working, if, they, if you don't get rid of those blockers, those people that are in this pipeline of delivery, 
Nigeria will not work. We need to change that. And I'm not, this is not just talking about people talk about Tinubu or Bi and Atiku. No, no, no. You're, you're talking too far up. Mm. Because they can create a very, very good silo of experienced people, intelligent people around them. But to deliver down the line, hey, mm. you have problems because we have people that their job is to make sure things do not work until their arm, arms are greased. So those people need to be taken out of the system. Mm. If they're not taken out of the system, they have to be retrained mm. to understand the importance of actually doing their job. If a teacher does not teach a child what the child is going to need, the child that's going to leave that school would not be better off than the teacher. You don't you do understand what I'm trying to say. Okay. If anybody, you know, listens to everything you said, yeah. you know, anybody who's in Nigeria, yeah. the person might feel a bit depressed because it's like... <laughs> no, they, 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 <laughs> like there's okay, so much... Let's, let's put it this way. There, there's, well, I think bringing about the opportunities are there. Mm. I've said it before. There's, Nigeria's a big market. In the whole of West Africa, Nigeria is a massive market where you can bring in goods and services mm. and you would make loads of money. Mm. You can see the Chinese there. They have their own massive factory. They have a lithium factory, um, lithium um, a port where they, where they, where they you know, mine lithium, where they mine um, 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 different kind of stones. There's, um, we have a large deposit of gold. We have, the large, we have natural resources in Nigeria. Mm. Nigeria is a blessed country. We just need someone to map out this end-to-end -end process, how it works, from mining <laughs> to the finished product. Mm. The government needs to do that, you know. The the private sector can come in and fit in some areas, but there has to be red tape around how it works, and it has to be able to work. So it's not it's not all bad. It, there's a lot of great stuff. Even in the, I think, as what I heard again, Nigeria is the largest um, producer of yam. We produce yam. Yeah. But guess what? We produce yam, but we don't import it over here. But Ghana, our next door mm. neighbor, they export, export yam. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, UK. the yam you eat in the UK is from Ghana. So that's a bit good business idea someone yeah, could take yes. on, isn't it? Exporting yam. Yeah. You understand? What are the regulations? What are the red tapes? Because I know there will be red tapes in Nigeria. Mm. This is why I'm saying that. It's not, it's easy to me to say, oh, this is great business idea, do this, do that. Oh, tech can drive. No, 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 no. The government himself needs to move that red tape, mm. make it easy for me to export yam and bring it aboard. The crazy cost that would be associated with bribing or doing this or doing that, or maybe moving my yam on the road when I see like 50 police checkpoints before I move from my yam from about to Lagos. Remove all that. Mm. So my cost will not have been that high. By the time I get my yam to, to, to the UK and I'm trying to sell it, I've said that a reasonable cost whereby I can at the same time compete with my Ghana counterparts. Mm. So it, 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 it's 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 a whole process that needs to be looked and reviewed. And but government policies, government changes does not land on paper. Implementation is where we fail. Mm. We need people around that can actually help this to actually move this from A to B yeah. to C to make sure it filters down to the small medium enterprises that are trying to do their own middle, bringing yam over here, bringing indomie over here, bringing fresh vegetables from Nigeria over here at a very you know you know good cost. So that when he gets there, I can sell. Because don't forget, that money goes back into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm. that money goes back into Nigeria. So that, that those are the things that can help Nigeria. Another thing Nigerians need to do um, to help Nigeria is buy more made in Nigeria good. Yes. I did That's, see something like that yes. online recently. You need to buy more made in Nigeria goods. You mm. can't... You can, If you're spending money to buy your Louis Vuitton and all your branded goods, goods mm. from abroad. The money is not coming to Nigeria. The money is going out of Nigeria. Mm. The money, buy what is in Nigeria. Wear our clothes. Sew in mm. Nigeria. Buy shoes in Nigeria. Buy a lot of things in Nigeria. Mm. What you're doing there, you're building small economies. Mm. You're building the economy. You, the money is staying in Nigeria. Don't go to, I don't know if we produce, you know, you know I, th I think I read recently that we, maybe in the West, in the whole of Africa, we're the largest consumer of champagne largest consumer of um, wow. whiskey yeah. in the whole of Africa. So, mm. you know, even even we beat some Western countries. <laughs> so wow. then maybe, maybe the idea is maybe start making our local whiskey mm. and let people start buying the local ones that are made in Nigeria. But because of we have this inferiority complex mm. that yeah. we only drink things that's foreign. Mm. Only wear clothes that are foreign. Only wear clothes that are foreign. Maybe that's it. Mm. But then again, I understand why people do that. Because if you wear, if you have the local drink, they might be poisoning because people might make it cheap to just... Mm. So there's not those blockers, those people that just don't like things working, <laughs> need to be removed, removed from the system. I don't know how we're going to do it, but they need to be retrained and got them to think right. I'll give you a good, very good example. You know, um, 
I remember there was a guy. This is it's not apparently it's a new thing now happening in Lagos. Um, a friend of a friend. Um, he had um, um, a what's it called? A house a, a house help, and the house help was you know does cooking and everything. Goes to the market, cooks Monday to Friday, and goes and gets paid a very very decent salary. But the fact that the guy was not um, satisfied with the salary that he was earning, he wanted a little bit more. Mm. He now drugged his boss. <laughs> These are the blockers. <laughs> These are the people that have issues. <laughs> and he drugged his boss because he wants for his boss lifestyle and robbed his boss while the boss was asleep. But unfortunately for him, there was a camera catching him. Mm. The camera camera caught him, and um, you know, just because you want more, mm, greed, greed. So these are the ideas whereby we need to remove those blockers that mm. don't let things run smoothly. And we have a lot of them in Nigeria mm. and they need to be removed. They need to be taken out of the equation for things to work, for small, medium enterprises, for um, for us to have that domino f- effect whereby um, there's the trickle-down economics whereby money gets down to the to, to the people at the bottom of the ladder mm. for things to actually work, to make policies. They say 8K Naira, by the time they say 8K Naira to each person, each family, 8,000 Naira should get to each family, not 3,500 mm. because someone has taken out the remaining money. You understand? Mm. So those are the people that, so those need to be removed for, for Nigeria to work better. Mm. And, and so in terms of business opportunities, there's a lot, as mm. I've told you. The agricultural sector is there. The telecommunication sector is there. The broadband sector is there, whereby you can be last mile where you deliver um, 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 fiber and provide some kind of um, internet, basic internet services for businesses. Um, there's so many areas where you can add value, you understand, mm. in Nigeria. But the red tapes need to be removed, right people, all right, you know, and then, then it, it, it's an area where it can work, you know, mm. and it, it's, I think one thing I would say Nigeria government needs to do is, you know, power and security, get those two right mm. and make sure the law works. So if you're, if you're messing up in people's businesses, they can get rid of it very easily. You've mentioned so many yeah. negative things about what's going on in Nigeria now that's affecting SMEs, you know. Mm. So is there, aren't there any businesses right now that are thriving in Nigeria, in its environment? I, I, I won't say I was. I mentioned negative. I'll say I gave it the sandwich appraisal, <laughs> which is a bit of good and bad and saying, you know, and, and, I, and I think I highlighted a few things. Mm. In terms of businesses that are thriving, there, 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 there is a lot. We've got the the ICT sector in terms mm. of the technology sector, the Paystack and Co. Mm. They're all thriving. They're doing very well. This is this is the payment platform, the payment gateways. And we have, you have in the fashion and industry whereby if you go down most parts of Lagos and most parts of, I think, part of Portaco as well, there's so many beauty fashion. There's so many, you know, local fashion designers that are selling and providing, you know, new designs to what we're doing. And um, also the, the, the food industry, mm. I mean, you know, it's good. The, the food industry, in especially in Lagos and Abuja, if that transcends to other parts of the big cable like Kano and other areas, the big, big states in Nigeria, I think that's not an area people can focus in and go into because the way they've 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 transformed our jello fries to look, you know, differently and, and the kind of food that they, they've just been sold. There's so many, you know, options out there right now. People fly in to just, you know, do... The food review just based on that so and also um there's there's more tourism as well although there's insecurity there's still tourism because mm. they're, they're key areas that people like to come and see in nigeria so you know there's there's, there's the dari hills there's the abel kuta there's the you know i think i think Ubud ranch is still there there's those are areas that people can actually um um go into and you know for tourism and things like that i don't know if the and kind of games themselves still exist, but those are areas that the government can focus on to actually aid um, um, tourism. Um, so there, there's a lot of areas where, where where people are driving. Another thing that I would say is there's a lot of young Nigerians dying to tech that they're actually coding from their bedroom mm-hmm. and they're working with international companies. These are areas where that you know that that could be opened up a little bit bigger, whereby we could have the the, the likes of um, cognizant or you know, having an ICT hub in Nigeria whereby their developers are in Nigeria and they do all the coding and build, you know, provide the services to big companies. Well, these are areas that can be expanded on, but they're areas that are thriving. And, you know, I think, as I said, once the enablers are there, we're, we're, we're in a good place. But even with the state of the um, economy right now, yeah. different individuals could just go into those areas, right? Yes. Yeah, if they wanted can. to start a successful business, yeah, they could tap into those areas. Yeah, 
they, they, they are your, um, I call them your bottlenecks that you hit, but there's no place you go you won't hit bottlenecks. As long as you understand the terrain you're going into, then you should be able to um, navigate around those bottlenecks and be able to, you know, kick off, start off. As I said, your best bet is start with your Google, start with a YouTube to understand the terrain you're going into. Speak to people like myself to do some risk analysis, do some due diligence of what you're trying to go and to do in Nigeria. And, you know, I'll give you some insights. I might even partner with your body that you can work with to actually start, you know, rolling out your businesses, you know, just give you all the necessary tools for you to get up and running and provide that project management. I did say the biggest problem we face is not policies. You know, the biggest problem we face is not just policies, implementation. Implementation would help small businesses. So everything kind of ties into each other. As I said, I'm, they're not all negative. Mm. They're, they're, they're a mixture of a balance whereby you have some positives, some negatives, and the negatives can be removed as long as the people are willing to help. So is there any way um, your business could help some of our viewers? Yeah, so um, I am on Twitter, um, at Lancaster Investment. I am on Instagram, at Lancaster Investment. I also have a website, www.lancasterinvestment.com. What we do, a management consultancy, we, I'll call ourselves the last month. If you know, you've, 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 you've done your, you're looking at going into Nigeria, you're looking at doing business in Nigeria, you're looking at, you know, retraining, becoming a BA or being a business analyst or being a project manager, and you, or you want to come on board to actually help us, we provide that pipeline so that you'll be able to deliver. We do that first due diligence for you, understand the market tenant, terrain, do some market research, provide data insight for you to be able to deliver what you're going to do. So you have the data behind you, and we also help you on the line. So in terms of business health check, we'll come in there and say, this is the direction, this is where you're going, this is where you shouldn't go. I spoke about matrix. What are the key matrix? What are the key results you're expecting? At each quarter, we'll work with you and say, are you there? Are you not there yet? And, you know, just overall look at the health of your business and help you to move from A to B to C until you're fully, you know, um, um, thriving business. Well, thank That's, you for that, Michael. Yeah, yeah. So um, just before we round up, I just want to ask you three random questions. Go ahead, shoot. The first question is, yeah. how old are you? Ah, interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I, I have to think back. I think I'm 46, so I think I can't remember. 40. Okay. I think I can't, yeah, 45, I think. The second... <laughs> this is very interesting. I can't remember my own age. No, oh. Anyway, uh, You know, as you're getting older, you start forgetting. <laughs> I don't think about it. Yeah, go on. Second question is, what is your greatest achievement? Oh, that's, that's a very good one. Ah, uh, greatest achievement. I, I've never thought about this, but... um. I think seeing where I came from um, to where I am right now, you know, I I'll say it's 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 been a, a long journey, and um, and um, I think I I think one of my greatest achievements in life is being here, mm -hmm. <laughs> being able to speak to you here and talk to you about my experience. That that's a massive achievement. Having a beautiful family, it, it's an achievement as well, and um, you know being able to do have impact in people's lives is a massive achievement in terms of um training people or having this question we work with businesses doing that you know i think that that's a massive achievement and that's based on my failures because mm. i failed as well in businesses i failed i had businesses i failed i had businesses i sold so i have a lot of experience which i would say counts to the the person i am today in terms of um you know how far and how far and where i am right now in terms of achievement. Um, to single out one would be quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things makes a man. What's the next one? <laughs> I had a different question to ask, but because of the answer you just gave me, yeah. I'd say you mentioned you'd have businesses that have failed before. Yeah, yeah. So what advice do you have to give people who are running businesses to avoid their businesses failing? What, what um, do they need to do? Okay, so it's it's always so. This is how I, how I look at things now. So you always have a vision, and you have a strategy. Mm. You have a plan, and you must have indicators to to say where you're going. So are you reaching those figures? Are you getting to those numbers you're looking at? If you're not getting to those numbers, what can you do to get to those numbers? So those are the things where you start seeing. Okay. Do I need more TV ads? Do I need more social media ads? Do I need to change my product? Do I need to, you know, redesign it? Do I need a special cameraman to come in and take some very, very good pictures? Or 
do I need to do more speaking or, you know, going out to speak and advertise my product? So those are areas that I've seen. How can this move my indicator from 10 to 50? Do you understand? So, and keep reevaluating. Look at it. If it, you've made some changes and it's moving, if it's not moving in the direction, try something new. And um, I think why business fails is not necessary because of you as a person not knowing what to do. Or it, there's so many factors that can, that can make a business fail. Um, so what if you are daily looking at things I know now is set yourself certain goals and measure them. Am I getting there? What can I change? What can I do? And once you do that, that kind of helps you in terms of seeing, okay, this is where I am going. It's the first quarter. This is what I've achieved. The second quarter, this is what I'm aiming to achieve. So I have um, a vision of what I'm trying to do. And another thing is, what are my competitors doing? My closest competitors, what are they doing? What are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? Where can I fit in? Um, the ones that are highly established, how did they get there? There's a lot of market research and you know, understanding the data behind what's going on in the market, what's going on, and trying to feed that back into your business and making you to make the right data-driven decisions. You know? mm. Data, 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 data. Data will help you to understand where you are. Data will help you to understand where you might be going. Mm. <laughs> because it's okay. Currently now you're only earning 10,000 a month. If mm. you carry on like this, you won't be able to pay rent. <laughs> the data will let you know this. And, you know, if your overhead cost is too high, data will tell you, hey, mm. the way you're going, you're going down. <laughs> so you like, start looking at yourself mm. and start looking at things that you can change to make sure instead of you going into a, a, a negative, you're going into a positive in terms of going up, in terms of growth. Mm. So that that would definitely help any business person. So it's, um oh, and another good thing, this, people say this a lot, tough times don't last. Mm. <laughs> tough people do, so you carry on. Well, that was a great conversation with Michael. On our next episode, we have Dr. Trevor Adams. He's a mentor, he's a teacher, and he's a pastor. And he works very deeply with the youth in London. I don't believe in spanking children. I think it's understanding why, you know, what is the purpose of spanking. Mm -hmm. And people would say, well, the purpose of spanking a child is to discipline a child. Okay. So I then break it down and I ask the question, what do you mean by discipline? disciplining yes because if, if spanking is a purpose of discipline what do we mean by discipline and for me discipline means teaching a child to take responsibility for themselves their lives and their community guys please don't forget to like subscribe and share we really need your support see you next time